I've been a student of uh, the sport of freediving for quite a few years now and I've been steadily improving at it and uh, now I'm able to dive and spearfish over 100 feet deep. I've shot a fish in 108 feet before and um, I can break it down to three main aspects. I would say it comes down to preparation, confidence and relaxation. Now preparation, when I say this, I mean uh, in the build-up towards a dive, you want to really do your best to saturate your blood with oxygen and take ample time on the surface between dives to really recover. Sometimes your body is going to pretend to think it needs air, which is just a sign of high carbon dioxide levels in your blood, not necessarily low oxygen levels. And you're going to feel, uh, it's perfectly normal to feel this, kind of a... Uh, a reflex coming on where you, you feel like you need air, you feel that feeling of uh, diaphragm contractions. And I would describe it as uh, just relax and push it back, push it down, that's okay, it's going to happen, it doesn't mean you're, you need air right now, dive can go on. So push it back down and it's going to come up again and just, uh, just relax and be comfortable with it. And the more you do it, the more you're going to tolerate high levels of waste products in your cells and high levels of carbon dioxide in your blood. And uh, it's really a, a beautiful sport and it's, uh, it's an amazing thing to be down there with the sea life in the ocean for over a minute, two minutes, down over a hundred feet. It's spectacular. It's a true sport. Another thing uh, that you can do to help you be a better diver is to become aware of your heart rate and how to slow it down, how to hold air in your lungs and then exhale it slowly by exhaling it slowly, you can actually, for me, I can actually feel my heart slowing down. And then, breathing like this in a pattern between dives, I find really helps. You want to make sure you don't overexert yourself in the beginning of a dive. So when you're coming down and you're descending, you want to kick just enough to where you're negatively buoyant, where you start to sink, and then don't rush things, just relax and allow yourself to pick up speed as you just free fall down to the bottom. Just glide, it's a, it's, uh, it feels like you're flying almost and just and then you can almost cock a fin out and you'll free fall in a spiral which will allow you to see the full view of the bottom as it comes in to view and then you can uh, pick any point of interest and just slightly arch your back, use your core to direct you where you want to free fall towards. It saves a lot of oxygen, precious oxygen at that depth. Now a lot of people make the mistakes when they try to swim down, they end up swimming diagonally because their head is up and they're looking for the bottom. So when you want to swim, make a dive, you want to make sure you're diving as short a distance as possible. So you want to dive straight down. And a good way to check this is just to look down. And when you look down, you should be seeing light and you should be seeing the surface straight down behind you. You should take uh, twice or three times as long on the surface breathing between dives to be safe. You want to make sure that you've fully recovered, you've fully exchanged all the gases in your blood and you're fresh again to go down to the bottom. It's never a good idea to do this alone. When you're doing deep dives it's always good to have a buddy system. So when you're diving down at the bottom your buddy is breathing up on the surface and then you switch. And if you were to have a problem, most likely you will be on the way up. So he'll be watching you and can come down to meet you halfway if you have any problems.